All right, we have more changes unfolding in geopolitics and in the world of global trade. Changes that have U.S. policymakers on heightened alert after chaos erupts in the Middle East. Global shipping routes are being threatened and shut down and container shipping rates are about to go through the roof. This is a real threat to market stability and the United States is in the hot seat. It's like the primary reason for U.S. military dominance. It's why our allies allow us to hold so much sway over the international order. Everything comes down to maritime shipping and it's on fire right now. This is not just a warning, this is actively happening. 18% of global trade has already been affected and the ramifications are immense. So we're going to look at what's happening, how quickly this will spill over to your wallet, why the Biden administration has to get this under control now sooner than later, as this is the type of thing that nations go to war over. And we're going to look at the impact as well that it can have on markets, according to Goldman Sachs research. But before we get started, press the like button and consider subscribing. It helps the channel out. And I appreciate your support. Also, for regular updates, check out our new daily show at the Notify America YouTube channel. The link is in the description. October 7th, the world witnessed a terror attack perpetrated by Hamas on Israel that shook the world. Virtually every country came out and condemned Hamas and the actions that they took. But since that day, a lot has changed. Over the weeks of Israel ramping up their war offensive, country after country in the region has begun turning. Sentiment has begun to turn. And now when you look at global support for Israel, it's basically non-existent, with the exception of one country, the United States. Steadfast in its support, the U.S. is firmly behind the state of Israel, setting virtually no red lines to how Israelis carry out this war, just acting as the supportive big brother in this conflict, standing behind them, warning everyone else not to intervene or you'll bear the brunt of the United States. Well, that may have worked in the first week that all this started, but things are different now. Multiple countries have called our bluff. We have Yemen's Houthis mobilizing to enter the Gaza Strip after successfully bringing all maritime shipping to a standstill in the Red Sea, which is actually quite impressive. Traffic in that small corridor has been virtually shut down. All major shipping companies have redirected their vessels to take different routes, longer routes, more expensive routes. Instead of cutting through using the Suez Canal, these container ships have to travel all the way around Africa, a much longer journey, a much more expensive journey. Well, if that wasn't bad enough, we now have Iran getting involved, not acting through a proxy, but directly warning the world that the Mediterranean Sea is going to be shut down for all shipping done by the United States and any of its collaborators, which is clearly a major problem. The Suez Canal moves 12% of global trade. The impact on prices and supply routes is enormous. You can see it on this map. Shipping companies that move these big 20 and 40 foot long containers, they cut through using the Suez Canal. But if you travel a bit further down, you run into the Red Sea, this tiny passageway here. This is what's already been like more or less shut down. Yemen's Houthis have made it incredibly dangerous to pass through over the last few weeks. Here's what Bloomberg writes. Half of the Red Sea container ship fleet avoids route after attacks. Diversions around Africa take 25% longer than using the Suez Canal. Half of the container ship fleet that regularly transits the Red Sea and Suez Canal is avoiding the route now because of the threat of attacks, according to new industry data. The tally compiled by Flexport shows 299 vessels with a combined capacity to carry 4.3 million containers have either changed course or plan to. That's about double the number from a week ago and equates to about 18% of global capacity. The diverted journeys around Africa can take as much as 25% longer than using the Suez Canal shortcut between Asia and Europe, according to Flexport. Those trips are more costly and may lead to higher prices for consumers on everything from sneakers to food to oil if the longer journeys persist. These are what current container shipping rates look like right now. We've returned to normal, folks, to pre-pandemic rates. You can see what happened back in 2021. The price to ship a container had skyrocketed. It went through the roof. And this data is from last week. Prices are about to spike again. The rate that shipping companies charge to transport your containers are about to increase bigly. Have you ever wondered, by the way, the reason that the United States is always so thoroughly behind Israel? No matter what, Support for Israel's unshakable. And most Americans believe it's because 
they're a great ally or they're a Jewish state or the fact that they're a democratic nation, that's got nothing to do with it. Israel's become like a catchphrase at this point. But in reality, it's strategic, purely strategic. It's got everything to do with maintaining the strategic maritime empire map, once controlled by the British and old continental Europe. Today, it's under the control of the United States, maintained by the U.S. with help from allied nations. They do this through very specific maritime choke points around the world. And Israel happens to sit adjacent to one of the most important of those choke points, the Suez Canal. This is what we're talking about. Here it is right here. If you zoom way in, you can see the tiny corridor that 12% of global shipping uses, nicknamed the crossroads of world shipping. If you look, all these container ships travel through here, and right beside it is who? Israel. But if you continue traveling down this route, you end up passing Yemen. And this small area is what has been shut down. The Red Sea has been bombarded with these Houthi fighters firing rockets, laying underwater mines, making the trip so dangerous at this point that these shipping companies have just said, forget it, we'll just go around Africa instead. And that's a problem, as the United States is supposed to keep global shipping moving. It's what all of our allies rely on us for. It's why we spend so much money on our Navy each year, well, along with the Red Sea and the Suez Canal being neutered over the last few weeks, Iran just announced they're going to be closing the Strait of Hormuz, which they can do, by the way, and they also claim that, you know, they're going to close the rest of the Mediterranean Sea. Here's what they say. They shall soon await the closure of the Mediterranean Sea, the Strait of Gibraltar, and other waterways. Watch. Tensions growing in the Mideast, Houthi militants targeting more cargo ships as Iranian commander is now reportedly threatening to shut down the Mediterranean Sea. Now, it comes as a chemical tanker off the coast of India was targeted by a one-way attack drone fired from Iran just yesterday. Now, Iran does have the means and ability to close the Strait of Hormuz, which is used to carry 20 to 30 percent of daily global oil consumption. You can see it here. This is their backyard, folks and would have a massive impact on gas prices. Up to 30% of all oil is transported via this waterway. So, so really, the entire Middle East is now erupting, folks. We are fighting multiple wars. We're fighting a proxy war with Iran vis-a-vis -vis Israel, another proxy war with Russia vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine. China just told President Biden to his face that he is planning to reunify Taiwan, either peacefully or with force. Venezuela is talking about invading a U.S. ally. North Korea talking about moving to a war footing. Lots of geopolitical issues right now. And all of this has one thing in common. It's inflationary. War is always highly inflationary. I just posted on X about this yesterday. For example, the U.S. Economic Uncertainty Index just reached its highest level since the pandemic. This tends to happen in times of war, cyber attacks, terror attacks, oil disruption, golf tensions, political crises, that sort of thing. Well, we have all of the above right now, which is why it's amazing that the market is currently pricing in massive Fed rate cuts next year, thinking Jerome Powell can claim victory over inflation, that he's won the inflation fight, which is bananas. Sounds very similar to what happened back in the 70s. The Fed thought that they beat inflation, started to cut rates, then inflation came soaring back which led to Paul Volcker right, coming in and nuking the U.S. economy, raising the night rate to, I don't know, 20% or something like that. Well, these container shipping rates are about to explode unless something is done to combat or, like, calm down what's taking place in the Middle East. Otherwise, it could blow Jerome Powell's plans straight out the window, folks. Look what happened back in 2021. Look how expensive it became to ship containers, which is how the vast majority of goods are imported and exported, transported via container. When I was in the vending business 10 years ago, I used to order equipment directly from China and we'd ship it via container. They have these 20 footers or 40 footers and sometimes the shipping can be more than your entire load, by the way. When that happens, you see inflation spike. We've gotten these prices back to where they need to be, but if the Biden team doesn't start cleaning this mess up, you think prices are expensive now, just wait, because things could get far more expensive next year. All right, that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, got something out of it, press the like button. If you didn't, that's all right, too. Either way, I appreciate you watching.